All right, so today we're going to talk about 2.6, um, applications of trig ratios. So how do we apply them? So basically, we're going to be getting situations where it's maybe not all that obvious what you're going to need to do. And you have to kind of put all the pieces together a little bit now. For example, one of the things they're going to ask you to do is to solve a triangle. Now, what does solve a triangle mean? Well, it means you have to find all angle measures and find all side lengths. That's what solve a triangle means. Find all angle measures and all side lengths. So in this example, if I ask you to solve triangle DEF, um, I guess first of all, just as a refresher, this is the way you symbolize a triangle, DEF, so the, the vertices are D and E and F. Usually you write them in alphabetical order, you don't have to, but usually you do. And then this little triangle symbol means we're talking about an actual triangle with vertex D and E and F. Okay. All right, so if I write this, that means, you know what this means. You need to find all the angle measures and all the side lengths. And you can start wherever you want, right? Obviously, there are some things you can't do from the beginning. You can't use Pythagoras' theorem right from the very beginning because you're only given one side length. That does not work. You can't use Pythagoras' theorem, right? Um, you can't, um, you can't uh, uh, let's see, adjacent and I thought you can't use the cosine right away. Because this is the, to 25, this is the adjacent side. This is the hypotenuse. So you can't use ka, right? Remember, so, ka, toa. You can't use the cosine to, to figure out one of these sides because you're not given one of those. So you're going to have to use a trig function that involves the opposite side. And you're going to have to find either the hypotenuse or the adjacent. The other thing that you could do off, off the very beginning is find angle D, and that might be where you want to start finding angle D. It's up to you. The order doesn't really matter. But how could I find angle D really quickly, right at the very beginning? I have enough information for that, yeah? Exactly. 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 25 degrees. And what do we get there? 65 degrees, angle D, so angle D is 65 degrees. There's your first uh, first clue there, your first part of the solution. And you can actually write that in your diagram. It's a good idea to write that in your diagram. I didn't leave a whole lot of space to write things around here, but 65, angle D, 65. Okay, good? All right, any, um, any ideas or any... Which, which one do you want to, which trig function do you want to use now to solve for one of these? Which one should we use? Which one do you want to use? Sine, okay. So sine of 25, that's this angle right here, E, is going to be equal to the opposite over the what? Hypotenuse, right. So opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is 5 centimeters, and the hypotenuse is just the hypotenuse. We don't know that yet. Okay. So remember the little shortcut I just told you about? If you're trying to solve for this value right here, you can basically switch these two around. And you can actually just go ahead and write this as the hypotenuse is equal to 5 divided by sine 25. So if you have denominator and numerator opposite sides of the equal sign, you can just switch those values. Okay? And you go ahead, you figure that out. Calculator. So on the calculator, 5 divided by sine of 25 is 11.83. So the hypotenuse is 11.83 centimeters. Now, just stating this as a hypotenuse, actually not the best idea, because that doesn't really tell us anything about the specific triangle. So the hypotenuse is side DE. Okay, or it's little f. I don't really care which one you use, little f. 
is the side that's opposite of angle F, right? So that one's just easier, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So little f is here, and it's 11.83 centimeters. Okay, so add to your diagram again. It's just kind of the best way to go, so you don't... You can see what you have, and you see what you need to find. So one more thing we need to find is the adjacent side, right? So you have choices, again, here. You can use a trig function. Let's use 65, okay? Let's use 65, and you can use either... Uh, obviously, this is going to be the opposite side of 65, right? So, according to 65, this is not the adjacent side anymore. This is opposite. And um, we can use hypotenuse or the, opposite, or the adjacent side here. So, let's do opposite and adjacent. Which one is that? Tan. So, tan of 65 equals the opposite side, which we don't know yet divided by the adjacent side, which is 5. You guys okay with that? So 5 times 10 of 65 equals the opposite side, which in this case is actually, um, what is it, little uh, d, right? D. So on your calculator, if you do that calculation, you should get 10.72. D equals... 10.72, and that's going to be in centimeters. All right? So, how are we doing there? Did we get everything? Okay. Now, I am okay if you uh, if you leave, you know, these, uh, you can circle them all because they're all part of the solution. All right? You should also, uh, please, to make this complete, list the other angles and the other sides that were given. So, angle E was given... So list that as 25. Make that part of your solution because we've got to solve for everything. And angle E, or sorry, side E is 5. That's given. And you don't have to, you don't have to write uh, F as 90, I guess. Okay. So just write all this stuff out uh, so we can kind of clearly see. And of course, show your work for the angles that you had to actually determine that way. Okay. Any questions? So yeah, so that's a good question. You don't have to use the tan in this case to find D. You could use the cosine of 25 and find D. You could use the uh, sine of, of 65 and, and find that. So yeah, so you have lots of options. Okay, all right. Well, let's do a little bit tougher example here. It's example three in your textbook. It's on page 109, and this is what it looks like. So this is what the diagram looks like. It is an octagon, eight-sided figure. Octa is eight. Okay, the distance across is 30 <coughs> centimeters. So the question says this. A small table has a shape of a regular octagon. Now, regular means that all the side lengths of the octagon are the same length. Remember, regular. All, this, all the lengths are the same. The distance from one vertex to the opposite is measured through the table 30 centimeters. There's a strip of wood veneer around the edge of the table. You don't have to know what a veneer is, but basically what you have to know is that there is going to be a strip of material all the way around the edge of the table. Whoops, what happened there? I'm not sure. My line disappeared. Oh, now it's back. That was weird. Okay. So there's a strip of veneer that goes along the edge of the table. Now, if you're, if you're looking at the edge of a table, um, a lot of, you know, wood is not solid wood. And so at the edge of the table, what you see is you see the little holes and little particles, and it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look at all like the other surface. This wood is cheaper, okay, because it's just a, a very thin layer on top that looks nice, and everything in between is kind of like garbagey. So the veneer is actually... Basically, it's like a strip of tape. It's like wood tape that you basically glue on to this surface to make it look, you know, really pretty like the other top. Okay, so that's what's happening. This is being stuck on. So what are we looking for? The distance all the way around. What's that called? Yeah, we're looking for the perimeter. So what is the length of this veneer, it says, or what is the perimeter? Okay. That's all we're given. That's all we're given. 
So this is the kind of question you're going to get, and you're going to have to start to use your brain, and you're going to have to, to start saying, okay, okay, I know what I need to find. I need to find the distance all the way around. I would like to know what each one of these side lengths is. Boy, that would be handy, because if you got that side length, you just multiply by 8, and you have the perimeter, right? Or you add it up 8 times, you have the perimeter. Now, how can you do that? So you, what, what you'd start to do is you'd just start to say, and you would add to your diagram. This is why diagrams are very, very important, I think. Okay? You'd say, okay, I see a triangle here. And because the length of this triangle right here, the sides are half of the um, distance across. These are each 15. Okay, well, that's something else. Uh, um, that's, that could be handy. I don't need the area. What I need is this side here. And so you start thinking about this. Um, do you guys know, do you guys remember from math classes previous, and maybe you don't, I don't know if your other teachers taught you this, but do you know that on a regular uh, octagon like this, that each of these angles would be the same as well if all the sides are the same length? But each of these angles are exactly the same. Okay. Now, what is the angle measure for one complete revolution? around the middle. What angle is that? That is correct. It's 360. So you know what? To get one of these angle measures, which would really be handy uh, for us, um, that would be kind of good. Um, we could do 360 divided by 8. And what do you get? You get 360 divided by 8. That's 45 <coughs> degrees. So you start adding to your diagram, and we know that each of these angles is 45 degrees. Well, does that help us? Hmm. Does that help us? Well, we could also do this, and I'm going to maybe make this a little bit bigger. Just give me a sec. All right, so I made this really big now. So let's see if I can still manipulate that. Okay, great. So we know that each of these angles is 45. And do I have a right angle anywhere? Well, here's the thing. You can't really tell by looking at it. You can't guess and say, oh, this might be a right angle. Hmm. Let's pretend it is. No, you can't really do that. Um, what you need to, I mean, you could figure out what angles these are, but we don't really need to. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to say, I know how I could get a right <coughs> triangle. Ah, okay, that was a bad line. <coughs> so can, I'll, show, I'll do it over here. It's easier to write lines this way on this tablet. So if we go over here, you could make a 90 degree angle here by drawing a line and bisecting this angle. So you'd have this happening. So you see how I have a right triangle here now? I know that this is 15. And do I know what this little angle is right here? Yes, it is 45 divided by 2. So that's 45 degrees there. So what's 45 degrees divided by 2? 22.5 degrees. So, here we go. So you see how you're kind of piecing things together? You're using your, your previous math experience. You're using sort of what you know about geometry and numbers. And you're kind of piecing things together. Right now, you should be thinking to yourself, okay, I have a right angle triangle. That is very good. I have an angle and I have a side. That is extremely good. I can use Sokotoa. Right? You can use the trig functions now to start solving for some sides. Now, what do we need? We need the perimeter, so I it would be nice for me to find this length in this right triangle. Right? So, what happens next then? From 22.5, what side is this? It's the opposite side. And what am I given over here? This is the hypotenuse. So, what trig function relates the opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. And the angle, of course, is this right here. Okay, so we can work with this now. Opposite, we don't know. The hypotenuse is 15. We solve. Okay, you should get on your calculator when you do this. Well, 5.74. Is that does that look right to you guys? 5.74, and that's going to be uh, centimeters, because our original length here is centimeters. And so, 
How many groups of these, this 5.4 centimeters do we have? We have 16, correct. And so here is, here's one, here's two, and there's three and four and so on all the way around. So the length of veneer or the perimeter, right? The length that we're going to need, uh, the length of uh, veneer, it's a funny spelt word, that is needed is, what's 8 times 5.74? Right, that's 16 times 15 point, or 5.74 centimeters is 91.84, was it? Okay, so notice I've got a uh, word sentence to conclude. I've got a diagram, I've got my all my work. And I've shown fairly well here my thinking, okay? Now for some of you, again, we're working on showing your work. And I know I was in your spot too when I was in high school. I didn't want to show all my work. I didn't think it was needed. Well, why do I need to show all my work? It's all happening in my brain and on my calculator. I can, I know what I'm doing. Let me just get the answer. Well, let me tell you that from years and years of experience, in order for you to tackle the higher level math, you are going to get to need, you're going to need to get into the habit of showing your steps because that will help you to reduce the number of mistakes that you make in a long question. And that's the first reason. The second reason is, in order for your teacher to give you marks, they have to be convinced that you know what you're doing. If you communicate well with your work and with diagrams and things like that, then your teacher knows that you know what you're doing. Okay? So that's why I'm saying, hey, you skipped a step. I can't give you full marks here. Question is right, but you have no work. Guess what? You're getting half marks or whatever. So that's why I need to be convinced that you know what you're doing. Because, you know what, it's happened a lot where students have done two things wrong in a question, and coincidentally, they have, the second mistake has undid the first mistake, and they actually get the right answer, and they have a whole bunch of work, but the wrong answer, and you know what, that's not full marks either. Because instead of making one little mistake and getting a wrong answer, it happens sometimes where you make two big mistakes, but you end up accidentally getting the right answer. So you can understand from my perspective, that I need to try to assess what you know and how well you know you can perform um, calculations. So show your work. You'll make fewer mistakes. The teacher will be able to give you 100% because he or she will know that you know what you're doing. All right, this is a little little tip for you there. And so any questions about this problem? Again, I know this is kind of a bit of a longer problem. We took a long time doing it because I was explaining a lot of things. But anybody have any questions about this? <coughs> Uh, if not, then uh, I would like you to do the your turn or the check your understanding, the your turn question, it's what it's commonly called. And it's the same kind of question, okay? So you have a, let me just see if I still have this here, yeah, okay. So it's an octagon, except it's, it's very much the same, except the diameter is uh, four feet, the length across is four feet and not. 30. So, sorry, let me just erase all this. This is on page 109. Okay, this is your turn question. Okay, so here's the question I want you to work on right here. Just take a moment to do this question and then check your answer with the answer that's given in the book. But show your work and make sure that you can do this right. Very similar. Uh, find, uh, yeah, yeah, find perimeter. Okay. okay, so go ahead and take a minute to work on this problem. Here's the answer to your problem right here. Uh, the length should be about 12.24 <coughs> feet in total. And uh, yeah, here's the triangle that we drew, the right triangle. All right, same shape, so we have 22.5 degrees here. The opposite, or the hypotenuse would be 2. And uh, that should be your work there. If you can do this question and, uh, you know, solve a triangle like we did earlier, uh, if you think you can do that, then you're ready for this assignment.